what I've learned to do instead of try to make the fear be anything other than what it is, which what fear is doing is it's trying to keep me safe. I've learned to acknowledge it, welcome that voice into the conversation instead of trying to quiet it down or thinking that I can't move forward because fear is there and it's present and actually thank you. So I love when I'm in a season and talk about it on the podcast and then people come out of the woodwork letting me know that they are also in that same season. And that's kind of what happened when I recorded that series just a few episodes ago about the gap. And the gap is not a very creative name at all, but it's really the term that I'm using to describe that in between when you are on a journey of growth, you are up leveling. And we don't talk often enough how it's not this automatic, you snap your fingers and all of a sudden you're in your new identity. There is actually this this process and there is a gap in between when you definitely are not the old version of yourself, but you haven't fully embodied everything that is the new version of your identity. And that in between is often where I get stuck. It's where I see a lot of people get stuck. And it's also where a lot of really intense emotion comes up. So I put the question out to our text community asking what questions you all have about the gap. Because it is clear I am not the only one here, my friends. And I think what it means to be someone on a growth journey means that we're kind of in and out of these gap seasons pretty frequently. And this one for me, if I'm being just really honest, has been especially intense. It's been a gap season that tells me because of the level of discomfort that I have been sitting with, it tells me that I'm actually on my way to a pretty big up level. And that's exciting. But when you're in it and when you're in the really intense emotion of it, it doesn't feel good all the time. So my intention with sharing these episodes with you, and we're going to dive in and answer some questions over the next couple of episodes, just to really meet all of you where you're at, meet myself where I'm at, and help all of us feel less alone, but also to have some tangible tools, what you can do to support yourself when you're in these seasons of big transition, because I think number one, we talked about this in the initial gap series, which if you haven't gone back and listened to that and you are on a personal growth journey, I highly recommend scrolling back a couple episodes. But the one where I talk about the challenges, the gap can feel really lonely. You are shedding identities, you're shedding relationships and outgrowing people. And because of that, it can feel really unstable and it can feel really lonely. So I am excited to create this space that you can come back to and episodes that you can share with your friends who you know are just in it right now to remind us that there is a purpose to the gap. That's that's the whole thing that keeps me going is knowing that I am going somewhere better. I'm, I'm becoming a version of myself that I'm really excited to become, but also to know that you're so not alone. And especially if you are navigating maybe kind of like your first big up level out of, you know, an old previous version of you that you've grown up and everyone around you really relates to you as that person. And you're stepping out into what you really want to do and be for the first time. I think that can be the most intense gap season. Once you've been through it a few times, you're kind of like, oh, here, okay, here we are again. I know what to expect. And I've been through a few, but I'm in one right now that's especially intense and just being able to speak to some of the things that I'm feeling and how I'm supporting myself, I think will be helpful also for me when I'm faced with my next gap season. Because I know one thing for sure, especially if you listen to this podcast, you're someone who's on a personal growth journey. You are here to be and do more. And what that means is There will be parts of your current identity, even things that really work well for you right now that eventually you will outgrow in order to step into the next version of yourself. So today we're going to dive into one of the biggest questions that I got when I asked our text community 
What do you want to ask? What What's coming up for you in the middle of your gap season? Or where do you find yourself getting stuck? And a big theme that showed up was navigating the fear and anxiety that comes along with a gap that actually just comes along with any journey that involves change. And this is something that I've felt in a really intense way over the last several months. And it's something that I really have experienced in the past, but it's been a while since I've experienced it at this intense level. So I'm going to take some questions directly from you. If you aren't already on our text community, all you need to do in order to join, it's free. It's just the way that I love to connect directly with our community. I love to hear your feedback, your questions, and I personally read every single message. I respond to as many as I can, Um, but it's also the place you can send questions and suggestions, things you want to hear talked about on the podcast. So if you're not already connected there, you can text the word mentor to 602-536-7829. And I also send just a weekly little encouraging message, something usually that I need to hear. And then you'll answer back saying how much you needed to hear it and how did you know you were in my brain? And I'm, I'm really just speaking to also what I needed to hear. So you can look forward to receiving those. And then it's a place where you can submit your questions. So these questions, I'm so excited to give um, a shout out to everyone who chimed in and asked questions for this episode. And this first group of questions really is on the topic of navigating the fear, the very real fear that comes along with a growth and transformation process. The first question is from Nicole Roth, and she asked, how do you calm your nervous system when it feels like it is completely out of whack because the change can feel triggering and especially triggering of anxiety and doubt? And that that is like the perfect first question to kick off with because I think what I'm learning in this season and really remembering, it's not like I haven't been through this before, but man, I will settle into like the comfort of the season that comes after the gap. And then I kind of forget how uncomfortable the gap can be is to realize that when you're undergoing change, you are triggering very real survival mechanisms in your body. So you're not someone who is like doing this wrong. If you are feeling pretty intense feelings of anxiety or self-doubt It's actually the mechanism that's designed to keep you safe, or so it thinks. And there's this part of our brain, it's actually a similar part of our brain that regulates things like our breathing or our heart rate, things that if those were to change, like if there were actual change to your breathing or your heart rate, you would die. And it starts to to make sense why sometimes when you're going through a transformation, it, it feels like a death. Because there's a part of your brain that's being triggered to say, wait a minute, this change, that is not safe. We don't change around here. We like to stay the same. We like to stay super cozy and not change. And when you're on a growth journey, you you have to change. Change is actually the catalyst. So understanding that that part of our mind serves a really beautiful purpose to keep us alive, it just doesn't really support us when we are intentionally creating change. So a few things, Nicole's question really started off by asking about how do you support your nervous system? And it's something that I've known about, I've heard about. I'm I'm just in this season really starting to understand the role of my nervous system in a transformation journey. I'm realizing how much that part of me that wants to seek safety is really grounded in this very necessary part of my physiology that just wants me to be safe. And I think what I'm learning in this season, and we're going to talk more about this. I'm excited to bring some experts on the podcast to talk even deeper. I'm not at all claiming to be an expert in how the nervous system functions, but I'm learning a lot of really cool things and I'll share what's really worked for me. So the nervous system is that part of us that is seeking safety. And we're so glad that it, that it is, that's an important part of what keeps us alive. But I think working within your nervous system to start to expand it. And one of the practitioners that I'm working with right now kind of drew it out for me as like this. If you think of uh, like a wavy line, an up and down wave, almost kind of like an EKG, 
life has those ups and downs. And what we're, our goal ultimately is to expand the range of what we can actually handle, the level of stress we can handle. Because even the high points come with stress if they feel like change. So the goal isn't to stop feeling unsafe or stop that mechanism from working how it's perfectly designed to work, but to start to expand it where maybe you can only tolerate a little amount of stress right now, but you know, in order to expand yourself to be able to hold more, more success, more good things, it actually requires us to expand our bandwidth for how much we can hold good and bad. And, and I don't even like to put good or bad labels on it. It's just how, how high can we hold the energy of the highs, how low can we hold and be okay and, and support ourselves through the energy of the lows and some of those more intense emotions and realizing that expanding our ability to hold both is required. You don't just get to have higher highs without also expanding your ability to hold and support yourself and ground yourself through lower lows. Now, for me, what this has looked like, actual practical things that have helped me really support my nervous system in a time where there is more fear and anxiety being triggered than I'm used to dealing with. I'm dealing with really intense feelings on a daily basis where it actually feels like my survival is under attack. So in my body, that's what it feels like. You know, it's just the smallest thought all of a sudden triggers a feeling of panic. And everyone is going to be different. I really encourage you to find what works for you, but it's required a lot of slowing down. In fact, I slowed down a lot heading into this season, I think intuitively knowing I was ready to call in some bigger growth. So I haven't been able to accomplish as much work during a day. There are days where I have to really be very gentle with myself. I'm not doing the same kind of intense workouts. I'm doing more gentle workouts like going for really long walks instead of going to the gym and just really taking the time to breathe and use, you know, whether it's the first part of the morning, that's usually where it is for me to really breathe into what I need that day. Simple things that are totally free that you can do to ground yourself and your nervous system are things like going for walks in nature, being around nature and putting your feet on the ground, like in the grass the bare, you know, bare earth is really, really grounding to our system as simple as taking a few deep breaths. And I don't want to oversimplify this and pretend that three deep breaths are going to completely remove your feeling of anxiety. It, it probably won't, at least for me, you know, when you're really in it, there are days where it feels like I can bring, you know, again, if we're talking about like the highs and lows, maybe the high is like this feeling of anxiety I don't really love it, but it's it's kind of feels like a very intense emotion versus like a lower, more depressed emotion. It's more anxious. And I'm not going to be able to bring that from like an eight to a one, but I can bring it from an eight to a six. I can bring down the intensity of it by doing these things that I know really support me, whether that's talking with someone, you know, getting into community. I'm working with an amazing therapist in this season and just being able to process with someone who can help me understand what my body and my physiology is going through has been really, really supportive. Things like, you know, wellness, making sure you're eating really well. I'm not drinking as much alcohol in this season because I know that those are things that actually make the intense emotions that I'm feeling feel more intense. And I don't, I don't need to help my body feel anxious right now. It's doing, it's doing that well enough on its own. So it's a long list of things that we can try. And I think finding the things that really work for you, whether it's certain practices like breath work or meditation, or for me, the most powerful thing has been going for really long walks and being in nature and, you know, not necessarily having to listen to a podcast every single time, just being present with myself and knowing that I think putting also into perspective that I am in a process of change. I'm not expecting that I'm going to feel completely calm and regulated when I'm in a process of transformation. So also removing the pressure that it should feel different, not saying that you just have to put up with feeling, you know, really anxious or anything like that or a lot of fear, but I think allowing myself to realize that there's a purpose to this season. And as I'm allowing myself to experience and support myself through those higher highs, lower lows, 
it does expand my capacity to be able to hold more. And just knowing that I haven't been able to show up in the exact same way, like super, super productive that I can when I'm feeling more balanced more of the time. It's just been a season of like really taking care of myself so that I can continue the healing process that I'm going through. So I think it's important to talk about that too, that, and we're going to go deeper into this. We'll talk a little bit about what self-care looks like when you're in a gap season, but just having massive grace for yourself, especially those of you who are my fellow high performers, it feels like the hardest thing in the world to not do as much. But that's been really important for me. So, Nicole, I really hope that that helps you. I loved uh, the words that Lindsay Joe uses to describe these intense feelings. She said, what's the best way to pull yourself out of the gap attack? Lindsay, I'm stealing this. I feel like that's such a perfect way to describe. It's like, you know, whether you've experienced things like, you know, an actual panic attack or f- just really intense feelings of ang- anxiety, it, it actually feels a bit like your system is under attack. So we're now coining the term gap attack. Thank you, Lindsay, for that. It's like that moment where you're feeling like you're about to spiral, really nervous about where you're at, and it's just so easy to fall back into that place. So I loved this the way that she framed this question. How do you distinguish between your intuition, that little voice that you're supposed to pay attention to, and the fear? And Rainy Hernandez actually submitted a similar question that really just kind of gets at this point of like, how do you distinguish the between fear and your intuition? Because fear can be really sneaky. Fear kind of knows exactly how to play on where we're most vulnerable, especially when we're in a transformation season. So really learning to distinguish between, between the two. And I think I'm pretty good at it, but it's been a process over time. I couldn't tell you with 100% certainty, oh, this voice is fear, this one is intuition. But I'll try to describe what it feels like for me and how it feels different. And then I think learning how your intuition specifically speaks to you is really important to answer this question for yourself. So for me, even tapping into my intuition and really learning to hear it, and actually for me, it's more of a feel it. I feel like with a gut knowing a little bit more than I do hear audibly, you know, my next steps or what my intuition is trying to tell me. Usually what I have noticed is that, you know, the intuition, that voice is pretty still and quiet. And it kind of requires us to slow down before we can really, really hear it. Your intuition is not going to shout over the noise of an overly busy life or schedule. So if you're really wanting to ground into your intuition, it's required that you slow down a little bit. Even if that just means five minutes a day of quiet time, five minutes that you go for a walk and you don't listen to a podcast. It could mean driving in your car and not listening to the radio. You know, when you're by yourself, really understanding that space and quiet are required because fear will shout. Intuition will not. So even just being able to distinguish, does this feel like the energy of a message that's trying to come through And it's like if you were almost to personify it, it feels like someone who's really kind of mad or upset and they're almost yelling, right? It's not like I hear it really loudly in my in my head, but I'll feel it really intensely. And it usually triggers some pretty uncomfortable feelings as a result versus intuition. Normally, I'm not connected to intuition unless I'm kind of in a more still state or in a state like driving or walking, that's a little bit more hypnotic, right? You're just kind of more on autopilot. So for me, noticing what I'm doing in the moment when that feeling or that intuitive nudge or you know, if it's an action step I feel prompted to take, noticing what I'm doing, am I actually in a state where my intuition would normally you know, be there for me or am I 
in a different, if we want to get really nerdy and sciencey, it's like in different brainwave states. When your brainwaves are in more of a heightened state, that's when fear is speaking versus when you're a little bit more neutral. Again, if we go back to the nervous system, if you're more in like a rested state, that's actually when my intuitive messages come through. And again, for me, it's not like I hear an audible voice. It's more of like a gut knowing. And then the other thing that has really helped me distinguish how my intuition speaks to me is learning my human design profile. So as a generator in human design, and there's a part of, if you aren't familiar with human design, you can just Google it. You can take like a free assessment and it's based on like your birth time, your birth date, where you were born. And it's kind of freakishly accurate when, when you look at it. And the thing that has been really accurate for me is understanding that for my specific design, it is a gut knowing and it's very black and white. So meaning it's a clear yes or a clear no. And oftentimes what's easiest for me is if I ask myself like a yes or no question. So that's getting a little bit more into like the nitty gritty of your specific intuition. But the other thing that a mentor shared with me uh, in the last year, I think I've mentioned it on the podcast before, is that intuition, like your, your true intuition is kind of neutral energy wise. So it's not something that makes you feel really excited or really fearful. You know, again, if we think back to that high, low energy spectrum, it's kind of like the baseline in the middle. So it's more of just for me, how it feels in my body is kind of like a, oh, oh, okay. I think I'm supposed to go do that thing. It's not like, this is so exciting. I think I'm going to go and, you know, do this. And it doesn't have the same energy as like that high, low spectrum. It's just really more neutral. There's not a lot of fear in it. There's not a lot of like over excitement either, which sounds contradictory, especially any of you who know human design as a generator, I'm kind of following what I feel lit up by. And it's not like I'm, when I'm getting that intuition to maybe it's exit something or to start something new, especially in this gap season, there's a lot of shedding, letting go of old things, stepping into new ones. Where I find my, I'm able to distinguish between the fear and the intuition is, yes, I feel pulled towards something and I do feel lit up by it, but it's not charged with this energy that feels overly excited or overly anxious. It's just more neutral. And when I check things against that feeling, it's almost always clear to me which one it is. And it's going to be different for everybody, but at least that's for me what's helped me to really understand, to distinguish between the two. And then the second question that Rainey asked, which I think is important to talk to, talk about, is how to quiet the voice of your old identity. We'll even just kind of like call that one the fear. It's like the part of you that has no interest in your growth, no interest in you going somewhere new. It's the part of you that is based in fear. So how do we actually quiet that voice? Because I'm sure some of you have been thinking, even as I'm talking about this, yeah, it'd be really easy to move forward if I just didn't have to deal with that fear voice at all, if it was just pure intuition. And what came to mind in thinking about this question, because I I think I would have had a very different answer maybe a year ago. But in learning some of the new tools that I've been learning, and we're going to do a whole episode on some of the things that I've learned, and, and I'll share with you what I'm actively doing, like the tangible things I'm doing to reprogram some of these things. And definitely excited to bring on some incredible experts coming up who can talk even deeper on like a scientific level about this. But For me, I think the biggest change, and here's what is different about what I would have said a year ago versus now. I had all these tactics that I would use to try, very unsuccessfully, to actually quiet that voice. And while I do think that you start to build trust with yourself the more you take consistent action, the more you make and keep promises to yourself, I think there are little things that help you to better manage that voice when it flares up. But here's the thing that has actually served me best. This has completely changed my life in the last six months of learning to work with the fear a little bit differently. 
I think number one, being able to distinguish between the two and being aware of when it's more fear in the driver's seat. But then the second piece is what I've learned to do instead of try to make the fear be anything other than what it is, which what fear is doing is it's trying to keep me safe. I've learned to acknowledge it, welcome that voice into the conversation instead of trying to quiet it down or thinking that I can't move forward because fear is there and it's present or that voice of your previous self trying to coax you back into safety. What's been actually the most powerful for me is to kind of develop this dialogue with that fear, that part of me that doesn't want to grow, that's just afraid to acknowledge that what it's really trying to do is keep me safe and actually thank it and bring it into the conversation with, you know, sometimes I'm journaling about this. Sometimes I'm actually saying this out loud. You know, I'll, I'll put my hand on wherever I feel the fear. Usually it's kind of like in my chest, like heart area or like right below, you know, kind of like above my stomach, below my chest, solar plexus area and putting my hand on where I feel it, closing my eyes, taking a deep breath and just saying, okay, I hear you. I know you're trying to get my attention right now, you know, and sometimes I'll say like, okay, what is it that I need to know? Because usually the fear, if you imagine it like, you know, a little child who's like, mom, 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 like there's a boogeyman under the bed. All that fear really wants is to be acknowledged, to be acknowledged for what it's trying to do, which is trying to keep us safe. So asking it, okay, what do I need to know? What are you afraid of right now? And just saying, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for trying to keep me safe. I hear you, I see you, and and we're actually safe. I've got you. And I think when I've learned to just welcome that fear in instead of thinking like, gosh, I can't move forward. I'm not powerful unless the fear goes away. I've noticed that it, it actually loosens the death grip that it has on me taking that next step. So awareness is key. Okay, is this fear or is this my intuition? Usually it's pretty obvious when it's fear. And then just welcoming it into the conversation, realizing it's there with the best of intentions, trying to keep you safe. And the more I've learned to really work with it, and sometimes I have to sit for a while and just really acknowledge it and feel whatever fear it's trying to bring to my attention before I can move forward and I have more freedom to take that next step, if that makes sense. I love that question. I love all of these questions because this is so real. It's literally just so intense when you're in it and when you're going through it, it feels like I'm being stretched. It feels like a part of me is dying because there is an actual death happening. It's the death of your old identity. It's the death of whether it's like a part of your ego or a part of you that has made you who you are. So it's not going to go down without a fight. The last couple of questions I think are so important to just touch on. We're going to go so much deeper into them in in future episodes, but I loved how Tina, Tina Barnes or Barnes, if I'm saying that right, Tina asked specifically about how to work through a belief that the rug is going to be pulled out from under you and gave some like specific examples of how that might feel. And I feel like this one is so attached to fear. I wanted to start talking about it here. We are going to talk a little bit more about how to actually reprogram But I think the key is to realize, just like I was saying, that that fear is attempting to keep you safe. And then for me, this is what we'll go into deeper in the reprogramming episode, some of the things that I've learned, is to use a process to find where that fear originated. Because not everyone has that same fear, right? Not everyone has the fear of, okay, what would I do? What, you know, kind of like this anticipation of, the rug being pulled out from under you, whether it's you make a lot of money and you lose all the money or something is taken away really abruptly. That's usually what that energy of like a rug being pulled out from under you feels like. And typically what I'm noticing is with a lot of these core fears of mine and mine have been different, but just as intense, going back to where it originated and actually doing the work to heal it from that place, going back to memories, if I can access them of, you know, when I was a kid and when something happened. And a lot of times for me, it hasn't even been something that was that earth shattering, but I realized, oh, in that moment, 
as this little version of me. She didn't know any better. You know, in this case, she interpreted that scenario to mean that I was at risk for everything being taken away. And I've noticed that it always almost comes down to losing security, losing a sense of security or connection and love with someone. So as I've been able to work with, you know, my therapist and work with some of the tools that I'll share in this upcoming episode, I've been able to access a little bit more of the core of the fear. Because I think what happens for me is when I'm trying to address it as my adult self, I logically know better. I can logically explain to myself why that fear actually isn't valid or why I would be okay even if it happened. But then the residue of it is still there because I was never addressing the root of it. So just like I was sharing in the last question, understanding all of the fears, all of the anxieties that we feel have a purpose. They think they're trying to keep us safe because we are moving in the direction that we need to go. We're moving in the direction of change. Change is required if you are going to become the version of yourself who has everything that you want. Okay, we're going to wrap this up with one final question. And I just love this one. Tierra Charlton, if I'm saying that right, asked, how do we embrace the new journey in confidence without fear that you've made the wrong decision? If you find the answer to this, my friend, please let me know, because I don't think I've ever gotten to that point where I have 100% confidence that I'm doing the exact right thing or that it's going to work out exactly how I want it to. I feel like the real answer to this is that you're never going to have 100% certainty. And certainty is actually what we're looking for. Certainty is the feeling that the fear is telling us we don't have. Fear is trying to say, hey, this feels uncertain. This feels unsafe. But to realize that when you're moving in the direction of something new, you're never going to have 100% certainty unless you have a crystal ball or you can perfectly see the future. There's just not going to ever be that 100% sense of certainty. But what I've realized is that as I have built confidence in myself, I may not have 100% certainty in things working out exactly as I want them to, but I do have certainty in my ability to make it work and be okay and pivot as needed if things don't go the way that I planned. And that's actually where the confidence comes from. The confidence comes from making these little deposits over time, making and keeping promises to yourself, developing the relationship where you trust you. Because when you do, you have that unshakable sense of confidence that you will be okay even if you taking this next big leap doesn't turn out exactly the way you planned. And often in my experience, it can turn out better. And the other thing that has really supported me to have more confidence, even in seasons of uncertainty and change, is community, really leaning into my community, not just for support, but specifically cultivating the kind of community where people will be there for me in the tougher moments because there are a lot of them. But they're not the people that are going to let me stay there and sit in the the unknown or the misery or the anxiety. They're people who are going to remind me what I'm capable of, remind me of how they see me and what they see in me. And then also finding people who can be kind of like expanders for you, people who have overcome similar things to what you have overcome and they've created results on the other side. All of that really helps to support the part of your brain that is just seeking certainty right now. That's why the question of, gosh, what if I make the wrong decision? That's where that's coming from. It's coming from this fear of uncertainty that is so normal and it is just a part of a gap season. It's a part of a transformation journey. So thank you so much for submitting these questions. We are staying on this theme of the gap for a few weeks as I answer all of the amazing questions that came in. From those of you who are clearly here in a gap with me, and I kind of like to think of it as either we're in a gap together right now, we just came out of one, or we're about to head into one as we head into our next growth and transformation season. So I've got you. You're not alone. We're in this together for better or for worse. And I, I really just hope that this series is helping to meet you right where you're at and let you know that you are so not alone.